Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tips. My name is Julian, and if you're watching today's episode, it's probably because your matchup is pretty close this week. Well, this video is going to help you guys try to come out victorious in that really tight matchup. As usual, with this type of video that I make, the first section is going to be guys who can get you some points in basically any type of league. The second part, I'm going to talk about some goalies that play on Sunday that you can pick up for streamers. And then the third section of the video is going to be dedicated to categories leagues for specific categories. So if you need shots on goal, I'm going to be listing guys who are going to be the best bets for you to pick up for shots on goal and so on and so forth. This weekend is a little bit weird. There are no teams that play both Saturday and Sunday. So I decided to expand the scope of this a little bit and expand it to Friday because otherwise you're picking up a player from a team that's only going to be playing one game, either Saturday or Sunday. And... Yeah, that's fine, but I figured I could expand it to Friday a little bit. That way you could maybe get two games out of your players instead of one, although your lineup probably is full on Friday in a lot of leagues anyway. So let's take a look at this weekend and what it looks like. So looking at Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, every single team in the NHL plays two games those days. So they're playing either Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Sunday, except for six teams. There are six teams that only play one game, those teams are Arizona, Calgary, Detroit, Edmonton, LA, and Vegas, and those teams all only play on Saturday. That's enough of the intro for now. Let's jump into some guys who can get you some points this weekend. And first on the list, I have Mikael Granlund of the Nashville Predators. So far this season, he's over a point per game, playing on a really strong line with Matt Duchesne, who's also having a really strong season. So definitely he would be my number one pickup. You need to grab someone who's going to get you some points this weekend. He plays on Friday and Saturday. As you probably know, I added an extra column, guys, to the right to show you exactly what days these guys are playing so you can see if they fit in your lineup. Next, I have Valerie Nachushkin of the Colorado Avalanche playing on the second line with red-hot Nazem Kadri. And with Andre Burakovsky, it's a pretty good line. And since coming back from that injury, Nachushkin is a point per game, like him as well, as an ad this weekend. Then I have Victor Olofsson, who's finally back from that soft tissue injury. And he is going to be playing top line on Buffalo. And he's a very good player. Definitely don't mind streaming Victor Olofsson if you need some points this weekend. Next, I have Anthony Sorelli, and he's being thrust into a really big role right now with all those injuries in Tampa Bay, so he's expected to do a lot, and I think he's going to start producing. Last game, he scored a couple goals, so he's definitely hot, and he's definitely someone who could put a few points home for you. Then I have Matt Zuccarello. You guys all know I love Matt Zuccarello. He gets to play on the top line in Minnesota. He's playing right now with Hartman and Kaprizov. That's a pretty good line. Definitely don't mind grabbing Zuccarello for this weekend, and holding him longer than that as well. I still don't understand why he's only 25% owned. Next is Boone Jenner of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Plays Friday, Saturday. Plays top line, top power play. Pretty good deployment, and he's been doing really well this year. Don't mind him at all. Then I got Victor Arvidsson, who's playing top line with Kopitar. Top power play with Kopitar. That deployment's great. He shoots the puck a lot, so the opportunity to put up points is definitely there for Victor Arvidsson. Then I got Riley Smith, who's red hot right now, playing on the second line in Vegas with Dadanov and Nick Roy. He also gets a good amount of power play time. Don't mind Riley Smith at all as an ad. Then I got Trevor Zegris, who's finally starting to heat up a little bit in Anaheim. Right now, it's his line who's doing better than the Troy Terry lines. So Trevor Zegris, honestly, is a really good ad now because he's really hot. Then I got Robert Thomas, who's been great all season long. Then getting top six time, and he's continuing to produce. Then I have Schwartz and Eberly. They're on separate lines right now, but they're both guys who have been producing pretty much all season. Definitely safe ads. Then I have my Manscaped must add player of the video, Seth Jarvis. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word fantasy tip. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word fantasy tip. Unlock your confidence, guys, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Guys, the holiday season is approaching quickly, so get your Christmas shopping done early this year at manscaped.com. Use my code word fantasy tip. You guys will get 20% off, you'll get free shipping, and you'll get your holiday shopping done early this year. So the reason Seth Jarvis is my Manscaped must-add of the video 
is because his deployment is absolutely fantastic right now. He gets to play top line with Sebastian Ajo, and whenever you get to play on the top line with a guy as elite as Sebastian Ajo, you're definitely getting a really gut opportunity to put up some points. And Seth Jarvis has been doing just that. He's been scoring goals left and right. And he's basically confirmed to be in the lineup for the rest of the year because he passed that 10-game threshold now where they needed to send him back down to not burn a year off his contract. They didn't send him back down, which means they like him a lot. They like what they see. And I think they're going to keep giving him really good deployment. And Carolina plays two games this weekend on Friday and on Sunday. Next are Dawson Mercer and Jesper Bratt playing second line and top power play in New Jersey. They've been productive basically all season long. And the fact that they're so low owned still boggles my mind. They're only 13% owned in Yahoo leagues, which is insane to me. So definitely great pickups if you want some points. And they're guys that you can definitely hold on past this weekend as well. Next I have Ryan Johansson, who's only 12% owned, plays Friday and Saturday. And he has, he's had a pretty decent season this year, honestly. And now that Philip Forsberg is back on his line, his production could go up even higher. Then I have Nico Heeshier of the New Jersey Devils. Top power play, top line. He's having a pretty good season this year. He's not putting up a lot of peripherals, but if points are what you're looking for, Heeshier is your guy. Next is Sonny Milano of the Anaheim Ducks. And I don't understand how this guy is still 2% owned. I've included him in the last few videos I've made. He's playing on the second line with Trevor Zegers and Ricard Raquel. And he's also getting top power play time. And he's been like a point per game for a little while now have no idea how he's still 2% owned. He makes for an excellent ad for this weekend and to hold on for the future. I could honestly have Sonny Milano a lot higher on this list. Then I have Jared McCann of the Seattle Kraken, and I really like Jared McCann. I think he's possibly Seattle's best player. Right now he's being deployed on their third line. He's still getting power play time, but he's not getting a lot of ice time anymore. So while I still like the power play deployment, I'm not super high on him like I was earlier in the season, but he's definitely still someone who could get you a point. Then I got Tage Thompson, who's been pretty solid all year, playing top line with Olison and Skinner, top power play as well in Buffalo. Not the best team, but definitely pretty good deployment. Then I have Adrian Kempe, who's now playing top line with Kopitar and top power play as well. So that's definitely great deployment for Kempe, and he can definitely put up a point. Just note that he only plays on Saturday. Then I have Yanni Gord of the Seattle Kraken playing second line right now with Jaden Schwartz. And that second line has been pretty good as of late, so don't mind Leonie Gore as a pickup. And last but not least, I have Pavel Zaka and Andreas Johnson. There are other guys who play top and second line on New Jersey, but they have been doing very, very well this year. So if you're in a pinch, those guys are pretty good ads as well. What about some defenseman pickups for this weekend? Well, number one, I got Alex Golgowski. The dude's been going off like crazy with some points. And with Spurgeon out of the lineup, he's been getting some additional ice time. He's been getting a lot more power play time than he has in the past as well. So Golgowski is definitely someone who makes for a very good ad. Then I have Shane Gossbeer who plays only on Saturday, but definitely someone who's been putting up points left and right. Then I got Shillington and Rasmus Anderson, who also only play on Saturday, but they can definitely put up points. They're in perfect positions to do so. Then Vince Dunn, who's actually been pretty hot lately, been putting up points almost every game lately. He's been getting a lot more top power play time, which is definitely helping his value. Then I got Jonas Brodin, only 5% owned, but with Spurgeon out of the lineup, it's actually him who's on the top power play with Kaprizov, with Zuccarello. That's a very good place for Brodin to be. And while he hasn't necessarily produced just yet, he's in a good position place to do so. Then I have Jamie Drysdale, who's back on the top power play. They took Hampus Lindholm off, and Drysdale now has three points in his last two games. Then I got Scott Perunovic of the St. Louis Blues, and he has two points through four games. He's a dude who really lit up the AHL, so he could definitely do the same in the NHL. And last but not least, I have Colin Miller of the Buffalo Sabres. Not my favorite option, not a sexy option, but he's definitely someone who has been putting up points this year. And he only does get second power play time in Buffalo, but he gets a lot of ice time, which is why he's managed to put up some points. So what if you want to stream a goalie for Sunday? Well, there really aren't many options. All the goalies that should be playing are really high-owned goalies. The number one guy that I would grab is James Reimer, assuming that he does get the start on Sunday. He's the number one guy for sure because he plays against Chicago. Even if Aiden Hill gets the start, he would be the number one guy I grab as well. Then I have Yaroslav Halak, and the reason I have him there is because Vancouver plays both Sunday and Monday. So they play Sunday versus Boston and Monday versus Montreal. So there is a chance that Halak gets the start on Sunday, especially since Demko started quite a few games in a row at this point. Wait for confirmation 
of him actually starting before you pick him up, though. Then I got Kevin Lankinen, and Flurry's been starting a lot of games, so it's possible that Lankinen starts on Sunday against San Jose. Do wait for the confirmation to pick him up as well. Jumping into the Categories League section of the video, let's start with some shots on goal. And the guy who's going to get you the most shots on goal is Victor Arvidsson. He's been averaging four shots on goal per game, which is super high. Definitely the best ad if you want to grab a guy to really help you secure that category. Then I got Ricard Raquel, Jeff Carter, Riley Smith, Adrian Kempe, Dustin Brown, Jason Zucker, Brandon Saad, then Tage Thompson, then Andrzej Kasha. If you need blocks, Mario Ferraro is your number one guy. Dude's been blocking 2.8 times a game, so if you got him for two games, you'll get 5-6 blocks, which is pretty good for one guy. Then Zach Whitecloud only been back a few games, but he has been blocking 2.9 times per game so far, which is pretty good. Then Robert Haig on the Buffalo Sabres, 2.4. Braden McNabb, 2.4 as well. Artem Zub, 2.4. Essel Lindell, 2.2. And Patrick Nemeth, 2.3, although he has dropped off a little bit lately. If you need hits, number one guy is obviously Radko Gudis, but he's a little bit over 50% owned, so I didn't include him. But if he is available in your league, he's absolutely the guy you want to grab. He's been hitting 4.8 times per game, which is definitely the best in the league. Then I got Ryan Reeves, 4.6. Nick Delorier, 4.5. Reese Johnston, 4.2. Matt Martin, Cal Clutterbuck, both 4.1. Garden Hathaway, 3.8. Also has a little bit of points upside there as well. Then you got Jujar Kyra, 3.8 as well. And last but not least, if you need some faceoff wins, the number one guy to grab is Boone Jenner. Guy's been winning 12.2 faceoff wins per game. So if you pick him up, for those couple of games this weekend, you're going to get 24 to 25 faceoff wins just from Boone Jenner, which is absolutely fantastic. And then Jonathan Taves has the third most faceoff wins in the league. He's been winning 11.4 per game. Then Nico Heeshier, 10.5 per game, pretty good. Then Christian Dvorak, Joel Erickson Eck, Jordan Stahl. And if you need one who's low owned, Michael McLeod is the guy to grab. He's 0% owned, yet he's winning almost 10 faceoffs per game and lately has been winning even more than that. Definitely the guy to grab in deep, deep leagues. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tip. I'm constantly putting out updates to help you guys win each and every week of the fantasy hockey season. Until next time, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.